right. How are you going, you sexy Liverpool people? Are you good? Fuck well, yeah, another fucking Kiwi. We're taking over, man. That Brexit shit, the pound went down, and New Zealand dollars buy a lot more shit over here now, man. We're fucking... We're coming over. Thanks for that. Um, let's get a couple of things out of the way. First of all, uh, the visuals. I know uh, my look hasn't quite worked out the way I hoped. Um, fuck you, no one's ever laughed before the joke of that. That's not the joke. I didn't just come up and go, uh, 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 this is what I look like. And you're like, <laughs> you do. It does. I know, because it takes a long time. Like, brother, he's got his beard. It takes a long time to grow a beard, grow your hair long. I got tattoos. I was like, I'm going to look heavy metal, man. I'm going to look Metallica meets Norwegian black metal. Only to wake up, look in the mirror every morning, realise the closest I ever got to that is if all of Nickelback fucked Ed Sheeran. You know, I need that. <laughs> What the kind of fucking dude eh, who rolled into a barber's and went, hey bro, I want to look like Thor, but I've only got a fiver. What do you reckon? <laughs> Let's roll those dice. <laughs> fucking love you people, man. I love any casual as fuck gig when people got their feet on the stage too. That's good. No, you can leave him there, bro. Although this cool dude, did, she didn't move shit. He was like, oh, my. no, that's all good, man. You can leave him there, but still, I don't come to your work and put my feet up on your deep fryer. So, you um, know... So yeah, man, I am from New Zealand. I was casual as fuck, dude, there. Um, I love this gig. You guys are beautiful, man. So I am from New Zealand. I always like to roll out, do a bit of advertising, a bit of marketing for New Zealand. It's a beautiful, innocent place, man. This is how innocent New Zealand is. We called our national rugby team the All Blacks, our national football team the All Whites, and we're like, yeah, nah, not going to rub anyone the wrong way there. <laughs> Nailed those names. We name everything variations of all black, by the way. It's real lame. Like, our national under-19 rugby team are the small blacks. Um, <laughs> our national basketball team are the tall blacks. <laughs> it's true. For three years until our Prime Minister complained, the official name of the New Zealand badminton team was the Blackcocks. That's... That's 100% true, by the way. No bullshit. If you don't believe me, Google it, right? Although be prepared to go through quite a few other pages of Google results first. Yeah. New Zealand badminton needs to up their search engine optimization game, man. Fucking getting undercut. Nothing happens in New Zealand, man. That's what I kind of like about it. Like, the biggest news in the last five years is that last year we almost changed our flag, right? We had a flag referendum. The whole country voted. Tens of millions of dollars spent. And in the end, we collectively decided, yeah, nah. Um, <laughs> you could learn a lot about referendums from us, I'll be honest. Um, but it was a beautiful referendum too, because the way the referendum was designed, any New Zealander could submit a flag design. They would go on a website where any New Zealander could vote on them as many times as they wanted. No designers involved in this process whatsoever, which led to the beautiful moment in a country of four and a half million people. We came within a few thousand votes, just a few thousand votes in the whole country away from our new national flag being a 12-year-old's Microsoft paint drawing of a Kiwi shooting green lasers out of its eyes, blowing up a kangaroo. Um, <laughs> and I don't know about you, brother, how good would that have looked at the opening ceremony of the Rio Olympics? Man, us marching into the Olympic Stadium in Rio, going past Australia, like, yeah, it doesn't look like yours anymore, cunt. You know, that would be cool. We start a trend. Countries changing their flags to things that really represent them. England, like, lose the Union Jack or the Cross of St. George and have a real English flag that tells the world what you're all about. And, I don't know, you could steal the best bits of, like, 34 other countries' flags. Um... <laughs> Australia can have a flag that combines their twin national passions of surfing and racism. Um, actually, the NRA heard about our referendum and they wanted their own referendum because they wanted America to be the first country to honour the gun on our flag. They wanted a gun on the American flag. They thought they were going to be the OGs, first guys to do that. That's not even true. That honour goes to Mozambique. Mozambique have got an AK-47 on their flag. That's a shit-hot flag right there, right? Got like their national shield and an AK-47 crossed with a gardening trowel. Um, 
which is admittedly slightly less cool, but I like to think it was just miscommunication, you know. Someone was misheard the day that flags were being decided. The leader of Mozambique's delegation rolls in, and he was just misheard because he rolled in like, yo, 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 Mozambique, we are the real gangster rap country. Our flag, guns and hoes. Yeah! And it's like back out of the room. I'll be honest, gang, I've done that joke about four times. That's the best it's ever gone. Um... Because for any joke to work, you need everyone in the room to get all of the references in it, right? And that joke has a weird Venn diagram of references, where over here is hip-hop culture, and over here is horticulture. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I see a lot of gardeners in the room, I don't see a lot of hip-hop fans, right? So she just went, oh, <laughs> like... But no, man, it's cool. I like it. But I live here now. I live in London, actually. It's, it's fine. I don't know. I'm going to move up here soon, though. I think you guys are fucking cool. You sold me on it, man. But, but like, there's nothing much happens in London, you know. Like, like the other day, I caught the tube. I was kind of excited just to arrive in the country, catch the train. And, like, the doors did that close, open, close thing, which is really exciting because you know that someone somewhere fucked up. That's what that is, uh. <laughs> Like, you're feeling bad about yourself, then you see the doors do that, and you're like, oh, man, I might not have achieved all I wanted, but at least I didn't just get poleaxed between two tube doors. <laughs> Bet he dropped his coffee too, dick. Right? Yeah. But it was this beautiful English moment where the train conductor came over the tannoy system, and he just went, bing bong. Hi, to the woman who pushed the pram, presumably with her own child inside, through the closing doors of my train. Can you please take a moment to explain to everyone in your carriage why you thought that was a risk worth taking? Thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, this is the land of Shakespeare, man, that's incredible. But that's it, later that day I went to a post office and I heard a woman go, Yeah, yeah, thanks for nothing, you useless bitch. And went, excuse me, madam, would you please not swear at me? And she went, uh, I think you're fine, yeah, I think you're fine. I didn't swear at you, did I? Because a bitch, yeah, a bitch is a female dog. In it, you cunt. So, um, <laughs> land of Shakespeare, land of Danny Dye. You never know what you're going to get on any given day. But no, I live there with my wife, man. My wife's a badass, stone cold killer. Everyone always asks me, they're like, how did you know that your wife was a woman for you? I knew the first date, man. It was our first date back in New Zealand. It was Valentine's Day. Walking down Queen Street in Auckland, this woman came out of nowhere. She goes, oh, would you like a rose for $5? And I did that thing you imme immediately do when a charity mugger approaches you on the street. You ghost that shit. You're out, right? And I realized what I'd done, and I turned to my future wife and said, Shit, babe, it's, it's, our, it's Valentine's Day, it's our first date. I should have bought you one of those $5 roses, right? And I'll never forget it, brother. She looked right into my eyes, man. She looked right into my very soul, and she just goes, Nah, fuck that. For five bucks, you can get me a kebab. <laughs> right? <laughs> and when you know, you know, right? When you know, you know. Don't stop until you found that, man. But no, I, I, love, I love being married, man. It was being single that I was terrible at. You're looking at a guy, I once fell in love with a woman after a one night stand, right? Fell in love after a one night stand. And it wasn't even like the sex was incredible, uh, for which I fully take the blame that's on me. Because uh, I had, no, I'd taken some substances earlier in the night, uh, nasally. Um, <laughs> the while being performance enhancing to my dance and conversation skills were of not a lot of use downstairs at all, all right? <laughs> It is a mark of her charm, beauty, and wit that we were able to have sex at all. But even so, even while we were doing it, I'd describe my erection as, at best, al dente. Um, <laughs> and I know that because I threw it against the wall and it stuck. That's how you... Yeah, we got Gordon Ramsay on TV at home too. Hey man, uh, I gotta go now, but um, you guys have been awesome. Thanks for supporting live comedy. This is a fucking cool place. Everywhere in the scene digs it. I'm Matt Stalinworth. Catch you later.